Welcome into my dog's favorite podcast, the Dynasty Dogs. Tonight, it's just going to be myself, Mike Anthony. Rich is on vacation. I'm sure having a wonderful time. So it's going to be a bit of a shorter episode. Uh, I'm going to be breaking down two quarterbacks tonight. But first, uh, not a whole lot of fantasy relevant news this past week. Uh, I know last week was a very heavy news episode with the amount of free agent signings, something that you know, we haven't seen in quite some time the amount of free agency and moves and trades and the amount of craziness that happened uh, last week. I think really the only thing this week that I could remember was Mike Williams being signed by the New York Jets. I do like that a little bit. Um, you know, when Mike Williams is healthy, he is a uh, vertical threat. Uh, you know, that is if he can stay healthy. But you know, they need someone to take a little bit of the pressure away from Garrett Wilson, who I am still very high on. He just needs a little bit of help. I do think they address the wide receiver position in the draft because Mike Williams isn't a super dependable target, like I meant, or a super dependable uh, wide receiver. You know, he's a little bit older. He's 29. He's been banged up his career, but um, just adds a different dimension to the Jets. They don't really have a big body guy, uh, go up and get it type of receiver. I know in his you know recent years hasn't been uh, just as, you know, he hasn't been much of a deep receiver like he's been, but, you know, he could still be using that situation. Um, so I do like this move. I like it for Aaron Rodgers as well. They really needed a lot of tar- uh, a lot of weapons on that team because they, they're kind of depleted at the wide receiver position. Um, they're not, they finally brought in somebody who isn't a (laughs) former Green Bay Packer, you know, Al Lazard, Randall Cobb. Uh, they brought in somebody from the Los Angeles Chargers, but you know, I like this move. Um, I think it could be good for them. Um, they have a really good defense. They have a, you know, a better offense on paper with Aaron Rodgers. We'll have to see what he looks like if he can, if he's fully healthy after his injury last year. Uh, in the first game, so we'll have to see. And, you know, he's getting older as well. Um, so tonight, like I said, we're a uh, shorter episode. We're going to be talking about two quarterbacks. I decided to talk about the two quarterbacks that were in the national championship game this past year. That will be J.J. McCarthy, uh, quarterback for the uh, Michigan Wolverines, and Michael Penix, the quarterback for the Washington Huskies. All in all, both pretty good. I think they're both going to be good. They could both be good quarterbacks in the right situation in the NFL. I'm a little bit higher on one than the other. We'll get into that uh, as we go forward. Um, But I will now, hold on one second. I will be pulling up the, um, the PowerPoint presentation I made. Uh, By the way, this is the first time I've used a PowerPoint in about, you know, many, many years. So we'll see how this works out. I haven't used one since high school or college for that matter. So we'll have to see how this plays out. Okay. So first things first, we're going to talk about JJ McCarthy Jr. Uh, Michigan, like I said, Michigan Wolverines wide receiver or quarterback for that matter. I'm sorry. Uh, Six foot two, 219 pounds, a little bit bigger then I thought he does seem a lot slimmer when you watch him on film, uh, but that's what he weighed in at the combine, so it's a decent size. Uh, so he could have put on a little bit of weight, but again, I uh, I do think he's a bit slender. He is my QB5 of the class. That might be a little bit of a shock to some people. Um, I know a lot of people are high on JJ. I think he's good. I don't think he is the top 12 or the top 12 NFL draft pick that everybody has in, you know, pegged at right now, but we'll get into that as we go forward. Uh, Some stats on JJ, 2022, 14 games, 208 completions, 332 attempts, 64% completion percentage. That is one thing I will say, pretty damn accurate putting the ball, uh, getting the ball to his receivers, 2,719 yards, 22 touchdowns, five interceptions in 2022, 2023. 15 games, 240 completions, 332 attempts, 72.3% completion percentage, 299, 290, 2,991 yards, 22 touchdowns, 4 INTs. 
I mean, you could tell kind of by the stats and you can tell by the way I'm talking, I'm not the greatest at reading apparently, but you could tell by the uh, amount of attempts, the amount of yards, the amount of touchdown, touchdowns, the interceptions, uh, not asked to do too much. You know, we're going to talk about that briefly when we get to like the review of his film and, you know, much more, but um, you could essentially, uh, I use Dynasty Nerds Film Room, shout out to them. Uh, make sure you look into that. That is a great tool, um, great way to watch all 22 film. So I really enjoy using that. But you could watch a J.J. McCarthy all 22 games. You could watch, I think I believe I watched four. It'll be listed on the next slide here. Um, you could watch it probably in about 20, 25 minutes, four games of film. Because there's just, he doesn't have a whole lot of attempts per game, a lot, you know. Now, is that him? Is that the Michigan Wolverine system? Again, we'll get to that. We'll just go to the next slide now. Anyway, uh, the game film review and more on JJ. Uh, I watched first Michigan State this year, Minnesota, Nebraska, and Ohio State. I tend to watch the games of the current year just because, you know, I, I, I don't want to go back to their freshman year because, you know, they might not have been as established. They might, you know, they're obviously, uh, you know, hopefully trending in the right direction. If I start to see some things where maybe I need to go back and look because uh, I want to see how they looked. But, you know, with JJ, there isn't a whole lot, you know, so we'll have to see. Pros, I will say he's really accurate, like kind of like sneaky athletic. Uh, I like his athletic ability. He's pretty good uh, when he's rolling out of the pocket. I did notice that. Um, I, when he rolls out, has to throw on the run. I think he's pretty good at that. Uh, zip on the ball. I will say that dude's got a pretty decent cannon when it comes to coming out of his hands. Uh, I, not to say like as in deep ball, but I mean as in like miles per hour, like a pitcher almost. Um, really accurate between the numbers. Uh, I would say accurate in general. And he seems very, very confident in his arm talent, in the, you know, on the run. Uh, in the pocket, even in the face of pressure, I, you know, he's willing to take those hits, willing to get the ball out. Uh, I will say that he seems very confident in himself, confident in that arm, sometimes to his detriment. Uh, we'll get into that. Cons, again, we talked about it a little bit. Not asked to do overly much in college. Again, was that because of the Michigan Wolverine system? Or is that because they don't believe J.J. can make all the throws? Uh, and when I watched him, you could tell that he struggles throwing outside the numbers. So when he has to throw to the ball to the sideline, when he has to throw um, you know, an out route, I noticed that he struggles on things like that. Like I think he's really good at slants, really good at crossers, anything over the middle of the field. But as soon as he has to put something you know, outside, I think that's really something he struggles at and really needs to work on to be a, you know, starter in the NFL. Because if you can't do that in the NFL, you're going to run into a lot of friggin' problems. Um, like I mentioned earlier, he seems slender than 219. I mean, maybe that's just me because I, I don't know, I, you know, who knows. But at 219, I don't think that's like small by any stretch of the imagination, in my opinion. Um, so this is one, this is a couple other things that really bothered me. Uh, no big time throws and not a lot of deep throws on film. Uh, big time throws are, you know, throws that are, you know, either deep throws or tight window throws, uh, like a kind of like big time play where the ball has to be put right in a perfect spot. Uh, he had a 5.9% on big time throws. He had one really nice throw against Ohio State. I will give him that. Uh, where he put the ball right over the shoulder of a, I believe it was a linebacker, right to Roman Wilson for a touchdown. Uh, but again, it's it wasn't something he did a whole lot. And I don't know if he can or if he can't. It's just he wasn't asked to throw deep a lot. And you could say, oh, he didn't really have that much you know, help uh, in the wide receiver room. But again, everybody loves Roman Wilson, man. And I mean, I guess that's, you know, that's one target, but uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't see him 
being able to make those big time throws. Like I mentioned, those between the or between the numbers, great. Outside the numbers, bad. Uh, not a lot of deep ball accuracy either. The few times he did let one rip, they were you know out of bounds, uh, missing the targets. Uh, you know, nine point four depth of target, so it's not a you know he doesn't throw the ball very deep. Uh, so you know, I'm not as high on JJ as a lot of people are. Uh, conclusion, I believe he's going to be a first rounder just due to, you know, his youth, uh, you know, comes from a winning culture, uh, seems very confident. Uh, you know, the, the NFL is in need of quarterbacks, uh, but he's going to need time to develop. He's a very raw prospect. Um, but I do think if he goes to the right system, like I feel, feel like I mentioned here, I think if he goes to Minnesota, Maybe he doesn't have to play right away. Maybe, you know, sits for most of the season or the whole season behind Sam Darnold, uh, behind, uh, you know, with Kevin O'Connell at the helm. You know, maybe it could work out for him. You know, he has Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson uh, as pass catchers. So that would be a huge uh, boost for him as well. And I think he's going to need that. I think he's going to need uh, some very quality pass catchers to help him develop because I don't think he's there now. I honestly would not take a tw top 12 pick on him. Uh, I would prefer he be a second round pick, but that's just me. Uh, I just, uh, there's so much I don't really like, you know, QB five isn't great. Isn't bad. I feel like he's a very decent quarterback. So we'll see. I, I'm not just not as, high on him as others are. I've seen him at, you know, QB3, QB2, QB4. I I don't know. I I just don't really see it. I don't see the arm talent when it comes to being, you know, able to make every single throw. Um it's just something he's going to have to work on. He's going to have going to have to go to the right system. So his dynasty rookie draft uh projection for him right now, if he does get that first round pick, even if it's mid to late Probably going to be a late first rounder. So, you know, I've been doing the Toilets of Titles, uh, Devi, or Devi, Dynasty ro uh, Rookie Mock Draft Laboratory every week with AJ, AJ Cole. Um, so, you know, in those four drafts, he's going at the 1-7, 111, 110, 111. So he's a, essentially a late round pick in the first round. I do think that's probably what it's going to end up being, unless he ends up getting a top five you know, pick, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I would be comfortable taking him there uh, as an NFL a GM or owner. But again, you know, I'm no quarterback guru. So, I mean, you could probably tell by my uh, my very, what's the word? Uh, what is the word? Non-genius IQ when it comes to this. Like, I know my verbiage is not great. I'm, I'm trying to get better. Uh, but. You know, I'm no quarterback guru, but I just don't see a top ten, top fifteen pick in JJ McCarthy. I think he needs. I think he needs the weight to get drafted. I think he needs. I think it's gonna. I, I just can't say it. I can't say it. So let's get into the next guy. It is going to be Michael Penix, senior Washington Huskies QB, six two two sixteen. Again, he he comes in weighing less than JJ, but he looks different than JJ. He just looks thicker. I don't know what it is. I guess not all 215 plus pounders are not created equal. I have no idea. Uh, he just looks a bit bigger than JJ, but you know, I digress. He is my QB for the class. I came in much more impressed with Michael Penick's film than I thought I was going to because of the kind of um, lack of hype around him as opposed to JJ. Um, he is my QB four, and I I do prefer him over JJ. I don't think he's going to. You'll, we'll get into it, but I don't think he's going to get drafted the way JJ is going to get drafted. So let's get into it. His stats: twenty twenty two, thirteen games, three hundred sixty two completions, five hundred fifty four yards, sixty five point three percent completion percentage, four thousand six hundred forty one yards, thirty one TDs, eight IMTs. 2023, 15 games, 363 attempts, 555, oh, 360, 
363 completions, 555 attempts, 65.4 completion percentage, 4,903 yards passing, 36 touchdowns, 11 INTs. I found that when I was typing this, uh, you guys can make fun of me all you want, but how did he have one more one more completion, one more attempt, and 0.1% better completion percent? That's just weird how that happened like that. I mean, maybe I'm just, I, 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 maybe I'm weird for noticing that as weird, but it's just literally one more completion, one more attempt, 0.1% better. Hey, you know, improvements, improvement, plus 300 more yards, five more TDs, but three more INTs. So let's get into the review and more. Games watched versus Cal versus Oregon versus Michigan State versus Arizona, all in 2023. So my first pro is ball placement. Man, man. <laughs> when I watched that Cal game, that was the first game I watched. That dude was dropping dimes. That dude was like literally on the money. And it was super impressive. I was like, damn. But then I got to some other games. And, you know, I will say that he's a bit inconsistent with his ball placement. But damn, when he's on, he is on. Uh, confident in the pocket. Seems like he's a very prototypical pocket passer. Uh, big time throws, 7.3. Like I mentioned, that dude just puts things on the money. On the money. Especially down the sideline. Um, he had a bunch of nice throws. There was one, I believe it might have been against Cal, where he had one in the back of the end zone. Um, that was just... Listen, I cannot tell you how impressed I was with Michael Penix. Uh, as opposed to J.J. McCarthy. Uh, I expected this to be completely flipped, just the way the, the lack of attention Michael Penix is getting. But um, his deep ball accuracy and deep ball, uh, deep ball placement is just, you know, amazing. Uh, he had, I believe, the most deep passing yards per PFF uh, in college football. And you can see why. Um, he is just on the money, man. And I, I, I don't know, but anyway, cons, he's an older prospect four season ending injuries in Indiana. Um, you know, he played six years in college. That's a bit of concern, especially with four season ending injuries. I believe, uh, ACL was one and I believe it might've been actually two. I, for, I forget what it was, but he had, uh, he's got some major medical issues that the NFL is going to have to, um, you know, look into. I believe he cleared all his medicals at the combine, so that's great news. Um, so we'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, another con I noticed is besides, I forgot to put it here, but his a bit of an in inconsistent accuracy at times, uh, inconsistent with his pressure. When I said he's confident in the pocket, he gets a little bit frazzled when he has to uh, escape make throws on the run, make things out of nothing. I don't think he's the best at that. I think he's best in structure, you know. Um, so that sounds like a detriment and a bit, it, it is a little bit, but if you can keep him protected, you know, if you can keep him upright, uh, I think he can make a lot of good things happen. You know, we saw it in the national championship game. Well, Michigan was all over him. They were making things, you know, hard for him. He was banged up too. Um, got a little bit out of sorts, out of his game. So that is something he's going to have to work on. I don't think he's horrible, you know, at facing pressure. I did see some big time throws um, when facing pressure, even putting it on the money uh, in tight windows. But again, he's super inconsistent at it, and he can get a little bit um, erratic when when the, the heat's coming. And I think this, <laughs> I have comp here as too. I know that's super lazy because he's, you know, a, a left-hander just like him. But again, if you watch him, he just literally looks like Tua um, when he throws the ball, you know, the deep ball, the accuracy um, can pretty much just pick people apart with how accurate he is and putting the ball on the money. Um, so I, I do see two in his game. Again, I know that's a bit lazy, but I feel like it just, it fits. Um, conclusion for him when it comes to the NFL draft, 
I believe I, there's a, sh- a shot he could be a late first rounder. It just depends on what the draft does. You know, say, for instance, I have here Denver would be a good spot with Sean Payton and Portland Sutton and Marvin Mims. I think that'd be great for him. You know, he could put the ball out there for those guys. Uh, you know, Denver can move back. Denver needs a lot, um, a lot of, has a lot of holes. So they can, you know, get some maybe more draft capital for their pick, move back, you know, take um, Michael Penix at the in the uh, back end of the first, maybe get a second rounder, uh, take him there. I think more than likely than not, he's going to be a second round pick, an early one, kind of like Will Levis was last year. And um, I think that would be great for him. I really would like him with Sean Payton in Denver. I think that would be perfect. Um, Dynasty rookie. Draft again with toilets of titles. He's been a second round pick consistently. The first time he was uh, picked to 12, which is the last pick in the second round, and then it got better 2.5, 2.7, 2.7. So again, I think that's going to be pretty uh, close to accurate as to what we're going to see when it comes to uh, Michael Penix's dynasty draft capital. Um, So We'll see what happens. The NFL draft is going to tell us more than what, you know, we know or what, you know, I think. Again, I could be 110% wrong. Shit, Denver could come out and take JJ with the first pick. And, uh, you know, then I would have to reevaluate everything all over again. Or, you know, he could end up being a second round pick, which I think is more, more of where I would be comfortable taking him. But. Again, the NFL draft is going to tell us the NFL. That's how I usually try to, uh, <laughs> because if NFL scouts are getting it wrong all the time, us as fantasy people are definitely getting it wrong when it comes to the quarterback position. So anyone who says that they're, you know, perfect scouting when it comes to, you know, anything, whether it's fantasy or NFL, that's bullshit because we are going to be wrong and we need to be able to admit when we're wrong. If I'm wrong about JJ McCarthy, you know that's fine. It just means I got to reevaluate. I got to, uh, I got to, you know, change some things the way I watch film. But again, I just don't see it, and I do see it with Michael Penix. Man, that dude's tough as hell. I think both of them are tough. I can't say that Penix, uh, that uh, JJ's not. But I, I came away soup. Just again, I know I mentioned it a couple times. I came away just super impressed with uh michael Penix, and i would much rather take a gamble on him in the late first early second than i would on jj in the early first or mid first to be honest with you and i'm gonna do that again i'll probably end up doing that in rookie drafts depending on the draft capital um you know if if Penix ends up being a fourth round pick then shit i i have no idea what i'm gonna do maybe i'll take a flyer on him in the fourth or fifth round of our rookie drafts but um so it just it, it's all going to come down to the uh, NFL draft. Uh, it's going to come down to where these guys end up going, you know, landing spots, stuff like that. So again, take it for what it's worth right now. Just just my opinion on what I see on these guys on film, and you know, looking at their stats and stuff like that. Because I that's how, believe it or not, I, I'm going to give you a kind of breakdown on how I. Uh, rank these guys and stuff like that a lot of guys like to do it just on film a lot of guys like to do it just on stats some guys do it you know with both and that's kind of how I uh, do my rankings when it comes to players uh, rookie evaluation stuff like that I like to bring everything all together Um, you know I watch the film uh, you know I like it or I don't like it there's things that I like I don't like and then I look at the stats and some of it makes sense when it comes to watching the film some like You know, for instance, JJ's big time throws, I don't see that on film. Uh, The deep balls, you don't see it on film. You can see by the PFF stats, uh, some of the things I had on here that that just doesn't really happen. And then when, you know, that's kind of, I put that all together and I just, I I base, that's how I base my rankings. And maybe one day I'll have to, you know, revisit how I'm doing it. But again, I, I think it's going to work. I, you know. I guess I got to toot my own horn here and stick to my guns, but um, well, I, but uh, we'll have to see. Like I said, it's all it's all a waiting game right now, and it's all a gamble right now. And if you have your rookie drafts now or your startup drafts now, take your shot, man. Take your shot on either one of these guys. Um, think for yourselves. 
Uh, you know, I'm just giving you my opinion. I, again, would take a shot on Penix before I take a shot on JJ. That's just me, you know? So that'll be it for tonight's episode. I appreciate you guys checking it out. I appreciate all the um, conversations we have on Twitter. I think you guys are amazing. Um, you know, follow me on Twitter at Dynasty Dog Mike. Follow me or follow Rich on Twitter at Dynasty Dog Rich. You know, we're always willing and able to talk shop uh, with you guys, whether it be on, you know, Twitter, uh, discussion or messages, it doesn't matter. I just, you know, we enjoy this. We love it. So just send your questions or, you know, just to tell us we suck or we're great. doesn't matter. Uh, but again, that'll be it for the Dynasty Dogs. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.